Welcome to another Force Point Tech Talk episode. This video is a continuation of last week's video and will cover the Forcepoint DLP network for email features that are included within the Forcepoint email security hybrid licensing. This video would also apply for customers who are interested in the Forcepoint DLP network component as a standalone solution. The only difference is that the Forcepoint DLP network license includes protection for both email and web traffic leaving the network. As always, please like and subscribe and leave us a comment below if you have any questions or an idea for another video. Enjoy! The Forcepoint DLP network solution is designed to prevent accidental or malicious data exfiltration through the email and web channel. This video will focus on the DLP network used to protect emails, but majority of this information is applicable to the web channel as well. Email is the primary method of communication for organizations today. This makes it one of the biggest vectors of attack used by malicious actors to fool, fish, or steal data from your users. As an organization, how do you respond to this threat? Do you block all emails? What about just block all emails that have attachments? Do you just do nothing and hope for the best? No, you have to protect your organization and your data. The Forcepoint Email Security Hybrid solution protects your inbound mail from phishing, spam, and viruses, but what about your outbound emails? Sure, there could be spam and viruses being sent by your users, but primarily, you should be concerned about the content that is being sent by your users. This is why the Forcepoint Email Security Hybrid solution includes the Forcepoint DLP Network for Email licensing to protect your organization's sensitive content that is being sent out. Whether this is happening accidentally or maliciously, the Forcepoint DLP network for email will help keep you compliant and keep your intellectual property safe within the network. If you've seen any of the other DLP demos that have been posted on this channel, you'll be familiar with some of what I'm going to cover here. This DLP solution has two main types of policies, predefined policies and custom policies. The predefined policies will assist your organization with meeting the compliance and regulation standards that are applicable for your industry and region. This filters the list to show you what's appropriate for your organization based on your inputs. There are roughly 1,500 predefined policies. These predefined policies will help you become compliant with policies like PCI, PII, PHI, HIPAA, GDPR, and many, many more. These policies are now active in a monitor-only mode. It will begin to identify whether the content of the email contains sensitive data. The predefined policies can be customized. If you want to change the conditions or what the rule is looking for or the action that will be applied to the data when it is found, you can do so. The other type of policy is a custom policy, and this policy can be used to protect non-standard data or intellectual property. When creating or editing a custom policy, you can set the condition of the policy to look for any sensitive information. If we select the Add button, we can see the options for patterns and phrases, data classification labels, fingerprinted data, machine learning, attachment type, and number of attachments. The patterns and phrases option allows us to create a classifier for any word or phrase, regex, or dictionary of words that you want to use and have this policy look for. Within the selection of the patterns and phrases, you can also use any of the predefined classifiers that are in the system by default, such as credit cards, socials, driver's license, things along those lines. The fingerprinting system allows for the creation of classifiers based on any sensitive data that resides in a file or within a database. Earlier I said that this system can look for any sensitive information. Well, that's not just me blowing smoke. Through the use of fingerprinting capabilities of this DLP solution, you are able to target any data within any file, whether that's a CAD drawing, Word doc, or an X-ray, and the system will create a unique hash file that will be used to scan all outbound content for similarity. This is, in my opinion, the most impressive feature of the solution that allows you the flexibility to protect virtually any data. From there, we can also see that there are some other email specific options here, such as file properties, such as type or size, number of email attachments and number of email destinations. And these are helpful for kind of, again, creating um, exactly the kind of policy that you're looking for. Once you have selected the conditions for the rule, you can go a level deeper and assign logic to how the rules trigger. 
All of these options allow you to customize the policy to target exactly the data that you want to protect while reducing false positives. Now that we have identified what data we want this rule to look for, we need to decide what the system should do once that data is found. When we select the dropdown, we can see that there are a few default action plans such as audit, block, etc. But let's edit one of these so that we can see what else is available. There's a lot here on this action plan page, but remember that this specific demo is focused on the Forcepoint DLP network for email. So we are only going to discuss the email channels actions. Under the network channels, we can see email. The dropdown shows us that there's a few different actions, permit or audit, drop attachments, quarantine or block, and encrypt. Most of these actions are straightforward, but it's important to know that when the message is quarantined due to a DLP rule triggering, it is stored encrypted on the email gateway appliance. The other option worth mentioning here is the encrypt feature. The Forcepoint Email Security Hybrid Solution has encryption capabilities built into it. A key point here is that the encryption only triggers when a DLP rule is triggered. This could be as simple as using a DLP rule to look for a keyword such as the word secure, or the word encrypt in the subject or body of the message. This is a manual type of encryption, but you could also set up an automatic type of encryption that's gonna happen just based on the content when a DLP rule is triggered. I'd like to take a minute to mention the different encryption options that are available. The first is the secure message delivery. And with this method, when sensitive information is identified, the message is quarantined and a notification is sent to the recipient that contains a link to a portal where they can access the message securely. Another option is the Forcepoint email encryption service, which is an add-on to the base subscription, but utilizes a third-party encryption service to perform the encryption. The other two methods are an integration with third-party encryption service, if you have one of your own choosing, or TLS encryption, which will encrypt the connection to the recipient's mail server. So once you've made your selection for the action, you can decide the source, if you want this to apply to some users, or if you wanna create an exception, or you, you, know, you don't want it to apply to everybody for some reason. And then lastly is the destination, where again, you can apply this to specific domains if you don't want it to all of them, or you can create exceptions. The last thing I would like to mention is another impressive feature that's included with this licensing, and it's called incident risk ranking. What is incident risk ranking, you ask? That's a great question. This system works as a behavior analytics light. It analyzes how your users act on a day-to-day -day basis and creates a baseline. And then when the users act anomalous to that baseline, it creates a risk score associated with that event. And what this really means for you is that, you know, when you come in in the morning and you're drinking your cup of coffee, you can come and look at this report see the risky users and then click on those risk scorecards and see all of the incidents that together made that user risky. And this really saves you time from having to actually go and look through incidents and figure out what's risky or just wait till someone reports that there's a problem. So that's the main meat of the Forcepoint DLP network for email solution. You get the capabilities of the full enterprise class data loss prevention system applied to all outbound emails included. I repeat, included with the license of the Forcepoint Email Hybrid Security Solution. Try to find another tool that has the best in class phishing, spam, and virus protection and includes an enterprise grade DLP solution at no additional cost. Thanks for watching this video where we were able to go through a demo of the Forcepoint DLP network for email solution. If you have any questions, leave it down below in the comments. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell to be alerted when new videos are posted. See you next time.